Welcome, in this video I'll be talking about the top 10 types of foxes. Enjoy! Number 10, the Tibetan Sand Fox. The Tibetan Sand Fox makes number 10 on our list because of their unusually shaped head. The Tibetan Fox is found only on the pl Tibetan Plateau, Nepal, China, and Bhutan. They can live in plateaus up to 5,300 meters high. They eat an animal called a pika, and bears will sometimes help them catch it by digging the pikas out. The foxes will then catch any pika that has escaped from the bears. Number 9. The Finnick Fox the finnick fox makes number nine on our list because they are the smallest species of canine. The largest of finnick's foxes weigh only three and a half pounds, while the smallest can be a mere one and a half pounds. Finnick foxes are native to the Sahara Desert in Africa. Their very large ears protect them from the heat of the desert and help them to sense prey. People often keep these tiny foxes as pets and they've been bred in captivity for many years, though not long enough to be considered truly domestic. Number 8, Arctic Fox. The Arctic Fox makes number 8 on our list for several reasons. They are the only fox species that changes colors. In the winter, they have white fur. In the summer, their fur can be blue, black, or brown, depending on the location and subspecies. Arctic fox have been semi-domesticated by fur farmers. While not bred for temperament like other domestic species, farmed arctics come in many interesting colors, including ones that stay blue all year round, ones that stay white all year long, and various combinations of bicolor blue and white markings all year long. Also in fur farming, Arctic fox times red fox hybrids can be created through artificial insemination, though the hybrids are reportedly aggressive, sterile, and short-lived. In the wild, these foxes live almost exclusively in tundra and other icy environments, but can be found in some forests in Canada and Alaska. Arctic foxes can withstand temperatures up to negative 94 degrees Fahrenheit. It is native to parts of Europe, Asia, and North America. Number 7, the red fox. The red fox makes number seven on this list for many reasons. It is perhaps the most well-known species of fox and is the species people are usually referring to when they simply say fox. The red fox is the largest of all true fox species. It is also the most widely distributed being found in North America, Europe, Asia, and some parts of Africa where it is native, and even in Australia, where it is an, an introduced invasive species. Red fox can come in many different coat colors. The most common in, is red, but other colors that can be found in the wild include silver and cross, which is like a mix of silver and red. Like the Arctic fox, the red fox was also semi-domesticated in fur farms and can be found in many domestic only colors such as dark brown color morphs known by names like cinnamon and collicot, white without or with markings of other colors, and many others. A white fox colored in swatches or patches of another color, like the one pictured in the photo I took at a zoo shown here, is called a marble fox. As mentioned in the Arctic fox entry, red fox and Arctic fox can produce hybrid offspring, though only through an artificial insemination and never in the wild. While farm foxes in some parts of the world can be considered semi-domestic, a true wholly domestic type of red fox was domesticated in Russia. This was done by an experiment in domestication that was started in 1959 by a scientist named Dmitry Belvalev. These foxes can sometimes have a unique 
coat color called Georgian White that is somewhat similar to marble, though less patchy and more spotted. Floppy ears and tails that curl over their backs like a spitz dog. They also have a more dog-like temperament than the semi-domestic foxes and that they greatly crave human attention even without being worked with for tameness. Number six, gray fox. The gray fox is the oldest existent species of canine. They are more primitive than any of the true foxes. Gray fox can be found in North and South America, where it has been present for over three million years. They coexisted with prehistoric animals like giant ground sloths. They are one of only two canine species capable of climbing trees, the other being the non-fox-like raccoon dog or tanuki. They use their tree climbing abilities to escape predators, retrieve, retrieve food in the treetops, or even make shelters that can be up to 30 feet above the ground. A closely related species, the island fox, is likely a dwarf version descended from mainland gray fox that were brought to islands by humans. Number five, bad-eared fox. The bad-eared fox is another primitive species of fox that is neither closely related to true foxes nor the gray fox, though it is more closely related to the gray fox than the true foxes. It is only 800,000 years old compared to the gray fox's 3 million years, however. It lives on the African savanna and, like the fennec, is protected from the heat by its large ears. These foxes are almost exclusively insectivores, feeding primarily on termites, but also sometimes eat other insect and insect-like creatures such as ants, grasshoppers, crickets, beetles, moss, millipedes, scorpions, and spiders. Rather than truly hunting, they forage for food using their sight instead of their sense of smell or hearing. Unlike most other fox which are solitary, bad-eared foxes live in packs that have as many as 15 members. These foxes also have an interesting family dynamic in which the male is primarily responsible for care of the kits rather than the female. Number four, the crab-eating fox. The crab-eating fox is unique in that it isn't closely related to any other species of fox. In fact, like other South American false foxes, it is more closely related to dogs and wolves than to true foxes. While the current species isn't that old, its first relative appeared six million years ago. Their ancestor lived in both North and South America, but the current species of crab-eating fox lives only in South America. Like their name suggests, they eat crabs, but they also eat lizards and other small animals. Unlike true foxes, crab-eating foxes will howl. Like many of the South American canine species, they are easy to tame and are bred by locals as pets. Number three, Culpio. The Culpio is another South American false fox that is more closely related to wolves than to true foxes. It is the largest of the fox species in South America and the second largest canine on the continent, weighing up to 25 pounds. It eats mostly rodents, rabbits, birds, and lizards, but sometimes takes larger prey. A single culpio can take down a llama-like animal called a guanaco, which is over three times the size of the fox. Culpio were once domesticated into a breed called a Fuegian dog by the natives, but that breed has unfortunately gone extinct. Number two, small-eared Zorro. 
Though small-eared Zorro is yet another canine species native to South America that is not closely related to true foxes. In fact, it is not closely related to any other canine species. It is also known as the small-eared dog. It being called the small-eared Zorro name, the Zorro part means fox in Spanish. It is found only in the Amazon rainforest region of South America. This animal is very elusive and mysterious and not much is known about it. Number one, Falcon Islands Fox. The Falcon Islands Fox is better known as the Falcon Islands Wolf or Wara. It is the only canine species to go extinct in historical times. Its closest living relative is the Maine Wolf. The Wara lived only on the Falcon Islands and was the only native land animal to that island. It was also the only canine to inhabit the Antarctic subzone. The Wara apparently had no fear of humans. The war's extinction was caused by overhunting for its fur and poisoning them to protect livestock. Since the animal had no fear of humans, they were very easy to hunt by luring them with a piece of meat and then stabbing them to death when they got close enough. They were extremely tame and curious and would often run up to greet humans and even entered into human tents to steal food. Two wara were brought to the London Zoo, but neither survived for long in the zoo's care. There are only about 12 stuffed specimens of this animal in museums today.